voting right now on whether or not to hold Steve Bannon in criminal contempt. And of course, once that vote is in, and it will be over 218 votes to do this, to uh, actually uh, hold him in contempt, nothing will happen, I don't think. I don't think. Uh, yesterday, Mary Clark from the Associated Press actually asked Jamie Raskin uh, whether or not uh, he would use the power of inherent contempt to get the sergeant at arms to go find Steve Bannon and bring him to jail pending his cooperation with the subpoena. And here's what he said. Are you guys going to jail someone if they don't, uh, the inherent, I mean, it's talked about a lot, it was talked about during impeachment. We don't have punitive intentions here. We're not out to jail people or find people mm. or whatever. We're out to get to the truth of what happened. Uh, people cannot obstruct justice in this way. People cannot violate uh, subpoenas of the U.S. Congress. And again, we'll use the sanctions that are at disposal, not in a vindictive way, not in a punitive way, but in order to see that the rule of law is vindicated. But really what the investigation is about is how was this planned? How was it organized? How was it funded? How were the different elements coordinated? And what was the synchronization between the political coup that was uh, targeting Vice President Pence, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence, to try to force him to return electoral college votes to the states. How was that synchronized with the violence that was unleashed against us on that day? We're trying to reconstruct this whole pattern of events, and we would hope that every American would be on our side in trying to figure this out. Did that answer you, her question, which she gigglingly asked him? I mean, she was literally giggling like a schoolgirl. And so they talked about inherent. Are you going to jail somebody for violating a subpoena? Are you gonna... What is so funny about that? Either Steve Bannon is above the law or Steve Bannon is not above the law. There is nothing beneath him, as you know. He has violated the law with regard to his own viewers, his own listeners, his own supporters. Built them out of millions of dollars with the fraud that was called We Build the Wall. Needed a pardon from the president and uh, freaking got one. What is so funny about that, Mary? What is so funny about actually insisting that people comply with subpoenas in this here country a nation of laws, not men. Why is that funny to you? I, I couldn't understand why it was funny to her. Of course, I'm the only one that saw that, but okay. <laughs> Jason in Simi Valley. Good day, ma'am. Good I, I day. just have a question, because you've been talking about inherent contempt, right? Yes. I, I, I think there are some problems here that uh, it's not as simple as, it. well, not that anything is simple, but here's the point. The Congress does what you say. Send, okay, send the sergeant at arms out to get the guy, right? Here's your problem. 80 years, because it has usually been dealt with uh, the Justice Department and such. Does, what happens if the uh, sergeant at arms goes off property, off the Capitol grounds, goes out to Maryland or wherever to grab Stephen Bannon, right? Right. Here's your problem. I mean, that state has its own law. That, that means it's an extradition to start with, because you've got to extradite him to the Congress. You can't just dr drag no, him over we there. Don't, we don't follow state law in the U.S. House of Representatives. We follow federal law in the U.S. House of Representatives. That is right. So it's Here's not, your problem. So you it's don't have still... to extradite from state to state. It's federal law, and federal law is supreme. Yeah, well, and I, I'm, what I'm trying to say is here, what, you're, what this is, 80 years later, is that it went from going out and doing that, which I'd like to know, did, did they actually 80 years ago go out and grab somebody and throw them into to a cell, which apparently is no longer exists yes. in the Congress? Mm -hmm, they did. Here, here's your problem. You go do that today, yeah. and those guys go marching up to him. That guy's going to get a lawyer, and what if state ch cops say, hey, wait a minute, you got to extradite here. You do not have no, again, jurisdiction. They're, again, they're, they do have jurisdiction. It's federal. It isn't state. Yeah, but it's going to get challenged right on the spot before they can lay their hands on him. It, it, I, I'm it's not saying I want him thrown to, in, too, you, by the way. You, I want you, him thrown in. I, I understand. You don't, you don't get to challenge your arrest at the, at the site of your arrest. Yeah, but the problem is taking somebody into custody. There is no problem. You can take somebody into custody. You can. It and happens. we've done this 80 years it ago, right? It happens every day in this country. And people, no, not and, this people, and people don't get to say when the feds come for you, okay, or 
or if this is a state matter and the court right. the right. court comes for you, people don't get to challenge and, their well, arrest the problem is, the sergeant on arms the is, spot. That doesn't yeah, but, happen in this country. You have to wait to be arraigned, right? And then yeah. you, when you're arraigned, you will be told what you're charged yeah, well, with, and then it, you can plead, okay? And that's that's how that goes. You don't get to challenge your uh, arrest on I, the I'm spot. I'm sorry. I've got to make this point here. And please, I, I love you. I'm not trying to be a... I'm saying right now, the, the process that was done 80 years ago, our legal system is radically different today. And if they were to go out there and do this, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that w- the only way this would work is if the Congress and the Sergeant goes to the FBI, the Justice Department, to get U.S. Marshals to go get it. Okay? So that, let me ask saying? you a question. Why, yes, ma'am. why does one branch of government need to go to another branch of government to enforce its own subpoena in your mind? Why, uh, because why that is, is the that? way the system, right, that wrong, or in between. That is not the way the system works. Inherent it, contempt gives Congress the authority to enforce. They may have the authority to, to do it, and I'm not saying what, they don't. But aren't we talking about what is authorized under our law here? Aren't, yeah, but okay. the problem is it. it, it, it there is a there is a long space between what they can do and what is uh, practical in this world. I guarantee you, if they try to why? get this guy, why is there any space between uh, what they're authorized to do to enforce their subpoenas and what really happens? Why is there a space? Because this is the way the system has this is not evolved. The way. It's it has evolved. evolved. How did it evolve? What happened it, in law well, that changed uh, it? Because Nothing. they haven't done this for eighty years. So what? That just because it's dormant doesn't mean it's it's something. Yeah, the that problem got is when changed. something is dormant. Randy, I'm. What I'm trying to say is, if you go ahead and do this, this could create a huge uh, mess because if a state can just assert a right, it right, wrong. It isn't a state. This is a federal. I understand that, but act. Fed, of Congress. Yeah, but you're still going to have to and go to the Justice Congress, Department. You're still going to have to go why, get the... Why does one branch have to rely on another branch in order to enforce its own law? Uh, we've been... Yeah, because that is the way it evolved. Okay, you're going to have to cite your source for that? No, no, I here's the, no, no. I, what I'm trying to say is practicality here. Okay, okay well, that's Please, a whole, I'm not trying to... So, well, so practicality, practicality has nothing to does do the with the arms law. Have Jurisdiction yes. off federal ground. Yes. Maybe yes, maybe no. What do you mean That's maybe yes, maybe no? That's not a question. All right. All right. But here's your point. The problem point. is, I'm sorry, the, ju- the judicial system in our country has changed. I believe in inherent contempt. Cite I want the guy source. dragged in chains before them. Tell me when inherent contempt was changed. Inherent contempt was changed because of inactivity because it became dormant because uh, in a way it almost in passed in, in, in the a, history i'm so sorry but that doesn't change the law if you had a voting rights act that wasn't gutted by the supreme court you'd still yes. have a voting rights act even though Agreed. it was uh, passed way back in 1965 it would still be the law unless it was gutted okay unless somebody went to change the law and the supreme court upheld that change okay so I'm just, that did not happen as far as I know? Yeah, you, yeah, you know what, Randy? Here's practicality and what goes on today. So you, you're, and, you're, and I have a question. Okay, all right. You're mixing two things. You're mixing what is written in the law and practicality. The law is not uh, practical. You know, it's not. And here's how we know. It could take you 10 years to even question somebody who wronged you in court. It took, what, six years for Donald Trump to even answer a question about the uh, uh, protesters in front of Trump Tower that were roughed up by his security detail in 2015. I believe he just sat for that deposition this week. So 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, six years. Six years. That's not practical, but that's the law. Don't confuse practicality with the law. The Constitution was written a really stinking long time ago. Long time ago. And guess what? You still have freedom of speech. Guess what? You still have freedom of assembly in some places. You know, we did have an attempt here in Florida to get rid of freedom of assembly with something called the Riot Act. (laughs) He was going to read us the Riot Act, uh, death sentence was. Uh, But it got struck down by the court because that old Constitution, that old idea, that old piece of paper actually while it's not practical (laughs) it still exists in law 
It's still how we self-govern. Now, when you don't agree that the Constitution is germane anymore or that it applies anymore or that it's not practical anymore, then we're not a nation of laws anymore. We're now a nation of men. And the men seem to be Steve Bannon. Sorry, I'm not going there. <laughs>